Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is our 12th installation of the Get to Know Your State Forest webinar series. My name is Sarah Corcoran. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the deputy director of the Pennsylvania chapter. I'm also the organizer for the uh, Save Pennsylvania's Forest Coalition, which is the coalition of uh, partners that is putting on this presentation, uh, well, the series. Um, Today, we have a forester from Bald Eagle State Forest uh, who has uh, decided to join us and tell us all about his forest district. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jacob to talk about Bald Eagle. Um, after our presentation today, we will have about 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. So if there's a question that comes up during the presentation that you would like to write down in the chat, at the end of our presentation today, I will read off all of those questions uh, so that way we don't have to worry about folks coming on and off mute um, at the end there. So think, think hard. If you have any questions, pop them in the chat and we'll make sure that those questions get answered. Um, all right. Jake, would you like to take over? Sure thing. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Um, as mentioned, I'm a forester within the Bald Eagle Forest District. Uh, in particular, I'm the service forester that covers Union, Snyder, Mifflin counties. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining today. Uh, we're going to do a, a pretty broad overview of the Bald Eagle Forest District. Um, some of the opportunities that are available, as well as some of the operations. And bear with me, uh, I don't believe there will be any technical difficulties, but uh, we'll try our best today. So where are we located? Um, as you can see from this map of the Commonwealth, um, there are 20 different forest districts and there's over 2.2 million acres of state forest land. The Bald Eagle Forest District itself covers Union, Snyder, Mifflin Center and Clinton counties. And we have approximately 194,000 forested acres, which makes us the fourth largest forested district in the Commonwealth. Here's a zoomed in um, map of our, our district boundaries. Now, boundaries will uh, change slightly depending on the program area, but this is our forest management boundary. And uh, you can see the bulk of our forest is uh, centrally located along the Ridge and Valley section. Um, a brief description about it. Um, Bald Eagle State Forest District lies in the beautiful Ridge and Valley region of the Appalachian Mountains. Tough, weather-resistant sandstone underlies the roughly parallel ridges, some of which reach heights of 2,300 feet. Softer, more erodible shale and limestone forms the valleys 800 to 1,200 feet below the ridge line. The confluence of the west and north branches of the Susquehanna River occurs on the eastern boundary of the district, opposite the town of Northumberland. State forest lands cover the mountain slopes stretching southwest across Snyder Union counties and into the eastern center in Mifflin counties. There are many streams within the area that originate in the forested ridges and flow through the rich agricultural lowlands, eventually emptying into the Susquehanna River. Public watersheds comprise over one third of Bald Eagle State Forest, making the wise management of this land essential. We're now gonna get into some of the history and not only the history of the Bald Eagle State Forest, but overall in Pennsylvania. Um, between 1850 and 1900, the population in Pennsylvania almost tripled. Um, there's primarily urban land clearing for agriculture, towns and forest products. There's a great demand for timber for industrial revolution, fuel, building material, railroad ties, charcoal hearths, iron furnaces, and of course, hemlock for tanning. I'm not certain exactly where these photos were taken, but this is what it looked like in most of the forested acreages in Pennsylvania at that time. Just north of the Bald Eagle Forest District um, is Williamsport and uh, was considered to many as one of the boom towns in that era. Um, in 1899, it was the peak of lumber production and uh, it was estimated that 2.3 million board feet 
um, came from the Commonwealth. Now diving into a little bit of uh, the Bureau history itself. Uh, in 1895, a full-time forestry commission office was funded and staffed to deal with the state's forest issues. On behalf of the state, the commission would acquire land suitable for growing forests to protect the headwaters of streams and ensure wood supply. Organize a fire prevention and protection system to enforce laws and educate people regarding careless use of fire. Assist the wood industry and forest landowners in growing and utilizing materials from forest. Continuously gather and distribute information regarding the forest environment Propose solutions to the tax drain on forest land that motivates cutting and abandonment of forests. The Division of Forestry itself was created in 1895, and pictured here is Joseph Rothrock, which was the first commissioner. Now getting more specific to the Bald Eagle State Forest District, you can see here um, Part of the naming uh, was based off of um, a Native American chief. Um, we had already, <laughs> excuse me, we had already talked about the uh, the Ridge and Valley system, and we're actually going to look at that a little bit more here in a future slide. And um, we're also going to talk about the different timber types within the state. But this this area of Pennsylvania was settled in the late 1700s, and it was the last stronghold of mountain buffalo in the state. Large land holdings that make up much of the present day Bald Eagle were assembled from original land grants given to Revolutionary War soldiers. They were purchased by major logging and lumbering companies in the late 1880s and 1890s. Over 120,000 acres were either sold to the state following extensive logging or bought at tax sales. The average price of land at that time was $2.30 per acre, a great bargain for the citizens of the Commonwealth. Moving into some of the planning foundations that uh, the Commonwealth uses, as well as the Bald Eagle State, State Forest. Um, it started years ago with, with the Pennsylvania Constitution um, and certain acts, orders and planning um, all went into uh, the present day Pennsylvania DCNR. So the mission of the Bald Eagle State Forest, as well as the state forest system itself, is to ensure the long-term health, viability, and productivity of the Commonwealth's forest and conserve native and wild plants. Penn's Woods is the strategic plan that we use as an overall guiding document. Uh, and then more particular management guidance is given in the uh, state forest resource management plan. So accomplishing the mission, managing state forests under sound ecosystem management. We try to retain their wild character, maintain biological diversity, and provide pure water, opportunities for low density recreation, habitats for forest plants and animals, sustain yields of quality timber, and environmentally sound utilization of mineral resources. This is all while providing various values and resources such as recreation and land base. So we had to start with some of the background and the history, but um, this is a beautiful photo that was taken a few years back um, of one of the many vistas in the Bald Eagle State Forest. Um, Basically, you can see for yourself that the forest have, have drastically responded and changed in, in that time frame. Um, we are reaching more mature forest. And um, again, it's just a beautiful view. And uh, we'll kind of get into some of those opportunities that are available in the Bald Eagle State Forest. So part of a forest is trees and kind of getting to be more familiar with the state itself uh, is to understand how much land base is associated with timber or forest. Um, Penn's Woods um, was a Latin term that uh, comes from Pennsylvania. Uh, there's 16.7 million acres of forest across Pennsylvania. And the state forest system itself is almost 17 million acres. 
which is about 13% of the total land mass of forest in Pennsylvania. It provides a suite of uses, values, and services, and it's a vital part of our heritage, culture, economy, and environment. This is my favorite slide in this presentation. Um, it's, it's a representation of the physiographic or geographic region in which um, the Bald Eagle State Forest resides in. And you can see um, it's, it's somewhat robin egg blue, but we're right in that northern part of the Appalachian Mountain Range. It's a very unique area. Um, we have the high ridges and low valleys, but it's what makes our forest unique and provides us with the different opportunities that we have here as managers and uh, those that utilize the forest itself. This is a broad um, overview of forest community types in the state of Pennsylvania, but it ties into the Bald Eagle State Forest. Uh, you can see that dry oak heath and northern hardwoods uh, is a major component of the forest community types. Bald Eagle is no exception to that. Um, we are primarily a dry oak heath uh, forest type. A lot of that be is because of the high ridges and very acidic soils. Uh, species such as mountain laurel can commonly be found in the understory and take advantage of these, these sites. So we touched on a little bit earlier, um, but ecosystem management is a holistic approach to biological and non-biological systems that takes into account ecological, social, and economic considerations. It focuses on how management decisions fit into a larger landscape context and incorporates resource management activities and human use of the forest, such as timber harvesting, mineral extraction, and recreational use. Breaking that down a little bit to kind of show how the different portions of state forest are used across the Commonwealth is this chart here that shows you um, about half of the state forest system is multiple resource, meaning that it could, can be utilized for, for different aspects. Um, many times the, the term working forest is, is used with multiple resource. Um, about a quarter is zoned as limited resource, which are mostly steep slopes where little or no management can occur. Wild and natural areas and buffers are set aside to be protective of certain resources, such as riparian corridors and areas of unique biological, geologic, or historic significance, or expansive areas where we maintain a primitive backcountry experience. And as you can see, um, that pretty much makes up the large part of that chart and how the state forest is zoned. More specific to the Bald Eagle State Forest, our management areas or, or where the state forest um, boundaries actually are, are broken down into land management units. We have 12 unique land management units and each unit is managed and monitored for specific goals and objectives. Uh, many times it allows managers to be able to correlate the, that ecosystem management and uh, have it pertain to, to a larger scale area. Moving into a little bit of the structure or the operations side of the Bald Eagle Forest District. As mentioned, we're co we cover Union Snyder, Mifflin, Clinton Center, and 500 acres in Lycoming counties. The Bald Eagle State Forest is administered by the forest district manager, also known as the district forester, and staff consisting of 26 full-time and 11 seasonal employees. The forest resource management staff consists of foresters, forest technicians, a maintenance repairman, and rangers, and is headed by an, a forest assistant manager. The forest operations staff consists of a fire forester, 
a service forester, which is my position, a recreation forester, forest maintenance supervisors, a mechanic, equipment operators, and a semi-skilled laborer, and is headed by a forest assistant manager. An administrative assistant staff, excuse me, an administrative staff supervised directly by the forest district manager completes the complement of staff. The district is organized like most forest districts. Here we have three separate forest maintenance headquarters, Eastville, Hickernell, and New Lancaster Valley, and a dis district office with garage complex. Each maintenance division is, is broken up from north um, of the northern portion of our district, uh, then the central part, and then the southern part. This is a pretty wordy slide, but it goes over a lot of uh, pertinent information um, and some of the statistics that uh, are involved in the Bald Eagle Forest District. A couple of things that we'll probably go over um, here in future slides um, is taking note of the amount of state forest roads we have, uh, the estimated 548 miles, uh, infrastructure like bridges and buildings. We work with 40 volunteer fire departments. We have two wildfire support crews. We also have extension, um, extensive amount of state forest lease camps and recreation is very valued in the Bald Eagle State Forest. So timber and forest products, uh, within silviculture and timber harvesting, uh, each forest district has ha harvest allocation goals. Uh, it's estimated that about 14,000 acres are harvested annually statewide. There's also non-timber forest products, such as mushrooms, berry picking, and firewood permits. The harvest allocation model is a 140 year plan to balance the forest age classes provide habitat diversity for wildlife, meet landscape goals while providing a continuous supply of timber. Each forest district has a 10 year harvest allocation goal and the model was implemented in 2004. The Bureau generates about $22 million in timber revenue based on that approximate annual harvest of 14,000 acres. Within the Bald Eagle Forest District, um, we have a working forest and a certain acreage allocation that's generated specifically for our district. Forest par products are harvested and infused into the local economies. Of the total acreage of the state forest, a little over 64,000 acres is considered commercially viable. There are eight natural areas and one wild area, which we'll go over in a future slide. 415 acres is our annual timber overstory removal allocation. We spend thousands of dollars each year to generate the forest through deer exclosure, fencing, herbicides, mowing, planting, and prescribed fire. Our challenges are invasive plants, competing vegetation, insects, and regeneration issues. These photos depict um, an aerial photo of, of a past timber harvest and uh, some, some of the mechanical equipment that an operator may use on site. Um, Pennsylvania's 2.2 million acre state forest system is one of the largest dole certified forests in North America. The forest is certified under the Forest Stewardship Council and Sustainable Forestry Initiative standards. The FSC is an independent organization supporting environmentally appropriate socially beneficial and economically viable management of the world's forest. SFI certification focuses on protection of water quality, biodiversity, wildlife habitat, species at risk, and forests with exception, exceptional conservation value. Dual certification ensures that PA state forests are managed to the highest third party standards. Again, within district, um, one of the emerging things that uh, we do with ecosystem management is, is look at landscape restoration. Um, this is a project that was designed by one of the timber management foresters. Um, this particular area um, may not have been the most commercially, commercially viable site, but um, 
we we work on projects encur encouraging young forest habitat with use of various management techniques. And it allows our resource managers the opportunity to treat areas with these lower economic values while increasing ecological diversity. Moving from the, the timber aspect of a forest itself, as mentioned, there are, there's a lot of water resources throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, this, this just kind of goes over the broad scale of the Commonwealth that it has 25,000 miles of uh, rivers and streams. There are special protection waters and wilderness trout streams. There's also uh, various lakes, ponds, and river islands. More specific to the Bald Eagle Forest District uh, is that we hold several pristine waterways. Fishing is permitted in all the waterways, with 14 streams being stocked with trout species by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Particularly noteworthy are Penns Creek and White Deer Creek for their excellent fisheries and habitats. And I believe this photo was taken along Penns Creek. Just a brief overview of soils. Um, as we already discussed, there's two uh, major geological areas that lie in the district, Bridge and Valley. Um, preservation and management activities always develop an erosion and sediment control plan. This is accomplished through minimizing erosion and sedimentation, using herbicides carefully, and leaving treetops and biomass after harvesting timber. Related to soils um, is overall forest health. Um, some of the common insects and diseases that we have been trying to manage and work around are hemlock woolly adelgid, emerald ash borer, and spongy moth. Invasive plants displace native species and are particularly good at colonizing disturbed areas, all while having a lower ecological value. Some of the other topics include climate change and deer overbrows. This past spring, uh, the Bald Eagle State Forest District implemented a spongy moth suppression program. Uh, spongy moth is a major defoliator of our oak species. Um, there was an estimated 15,000 acres of treatment. Uh, it's still ongoing for this growing season um, to complete egg mass counts to see what kind of uh, survival and or increase or decrease in populations we have within the district. Cultural and historical resources. So there's a lot of Pennsylvania history tied to forested landscapes. There's many artifacts on state forest land. Uh, Bald Eagle State Forest District itself has over has had over 10 CC camp, CCC camps that uh, were once fully functioning. Um, there are charcoal hearths, important buildings, and Native American artifacts. The Pennsylvania uh, Historic and Museum Commission has responsibilities related to National Register protecting and protecting archaeological resources. The Bureau of Forestry reviews projects for potential impacts to cultural and historic resources. This is a picture of where our Eastville Maintenance Division is uh, located. So that is a, um, what was formerly a, a ranger home uh, in the early days of the Forestry Commission. So present day, it's, it's still there and um, has a lot of history tied with it. And um, it's, it's buildings and infrastructure like that that uh, we, we take the opportunity to uh, maintain and, and keep as part of our history. Kind of switching gears here. Um, so the Bureau of Forestry is mandated to suppress and investigate all wildland fires. Um, typically our fire seasons are spring and fall. Um, however, there's always the imminent threat that uh, when there's um, seasonality changes, um, dry spells that uh, will be called to respond to wildfires. So fire threat is reduced through prevention work by many of our fire wardens. Uh, I had already mentioned how we have two 
um, Fire Warden Cruz, but the district has very uh, uh, quite a few um, district fire wardens on that are able to be called in response. Prescribed fire, that's a little bit different than wildfire. That's uh, actually when we're utilizing it as a tool and uh, based off of parameters that are, are made in planning, we're able to use it as a management tool. And it controls non-desired vegetation and uh, can also be a tool in uh, some of our stands that uh, typically aren't, aren't managed for um, commercial value timber. I wanted to also provide some statistics. Um, so statewide, um, there's a 10-year rolling average of 676 wildfires um, with an acreage of 2,910 acres. So that's an average per year of how many wildfires there are in the state of Pennsylvania. So far in 2023, in the Bald Eagle Forest District, there's been 37 fires accounted for totaling 240 acres. Switching over to operations, um, as mentioned, there is um, uh, a wide array of roads that we have to maintain. Some are classified as Z1 roads, which are our public use state forest roads. We also have Z2 roads, uh, drivable trails and or roads. Um, this photo here is of a five bay garage that was installed at the uh, resource management center. And then uh, this, this photo um, to the right of it is uh, some of the aggregate that's being placed on certain road projects throughout the district. Um, hopefully some of you have been here before. If not, I would recommend it. But uh, the Po Valley Tunnel was uh, restored and uh, was done so for recreational uh, safety, user safety, as well as developing roosting locations for bats. This is near Poe Paddy Park. And then just another slide of some of the infrastructure work that goes on in the Bald Eagle Forest District. Um, this was a, a bridge replacement. And um, if you travel um, any of the state forest roads, you'll see that that's a reoccurring um, maintenance um, that we, we've been kind of working on and, and working towards to again, improve safety and, and also um, work towards those ecological goals. So this is a very wordy slide with, with all the different types of recreation that we have within the district, but our district um, is one that's sought out for all the opportunities that we provide. Sightseeing is the number one activity and uh, we have 26 vistas. We have uh, 250 miles of snowmobile trails, 20 miles of ATV trail, 20 miles of off-highway motorcycle trails, and 86 miles of dual sport motorcycle trails. There are four designated state forest picnic areas and horseback riding and biking are also very popular sports. More specifically on trails, um, there's over 300 miles of hiking trails in the district. Uh, the Mint State Trail runs through our district and <clears throat> that's roughly 261 miles. Another um, trail system is the Central Mountains Shared Use Trail. Uh, that's, that's part in the Bald Eagle District as well as Tyodon. So that would be in our northern portion. There are 44 designated campsites and there's a new system in place to allow users to obtain permits online. So I'll just be upfront and honest. Um, I have not worked through that system yet, but uh, there is a link that we'll share um, to try and help you through that process. Here's a map. Um, so just trying to meet the diverse uh, user groups that are within our district. Um, this is of our dual sport motorcycle trail. It's in the Western portion of our district. 
And then this is our East Kettle ATV trail system that's on Penns Creek Mountain, which is just south of our district office. We're very fortunate to have uh, several state parks and recreation areas in our district. Um, Bald Eagle, Poe Patty, Poe Valley, RB Winter, Reeds Gap, and Shikalimi. Natural and wild areas. So Pennsylvania State Forest System includes dozens of special wild and natural areas set aside to protect unique or unusual, unusual biological, geological, scenic, and historical features, or to showcase outstanding examples of the state's major forest communities. Natural areas are managed by nature and direct human intervention is limited. They provide places for scenic observation, protect special plant and animal communities, and serve outstanding examples of natural beauty. Wild areas are generally extensive tracks managed to protect the forest, wild character, and provide backcountry recreational experience. One of the larger areas in our district is the, the Hook Natural Area, um, which is west of uh, Mifflinburg, near our district office. We also have several uh, wild plant sanctuaries. Um, they feature uh, vernal, vernal ponds, springs, and unique plant communities. Um, wild lupine is found in the Cooper Run area, and new developments are being discovered in other sections of the state forest. Wildlife. There's numerous species of birds, mammals, amphibians, as well as reptiles within our, our district. Um, we strive for management and protection to promote species habitat. Uh, also noteworthy is the Penn State Deer Forest Study. Um, the study was conducted to better understand the role of deer in the context of all, all, all the challenges and to help Pennsylvania's forest and wildlife managers better manage deer and the forest. Pennsylvania forests face many challenges, including invasive plants, insect outbreaks, soil acidity, tree diseases, and deer. Wildlife continued. Um, there's district-wide restrictions on timber harvesting in designated areas in certain times of the year to protect the roosting um, locations for bats. Um, also noteworthy is currently half of the district is in a chronic wasting disease management unit. If you've spent uh, any amount of time in the Bald Eagle State Forest, um, sooner or later you may run into um, one, of, one of these on the left-hand side. Um, and really words can't describe your first experience, but uh, having worked in the Bald Eagle State Forest District for almost 10 years, um, I'm somewhat used to them. So maybe we all become used to them at some point. Research, there's ongoing agreements with the Pennsylvania Game Commission, Penn State University, and the US Forest Service. Tree, water, insect, and animal studies conducted by Bucknell University, Susquehanna University, and other partners. Volunteerism is also very important in the Bald Eagle District and uh, helps support our operations and infrastructure. Many volunteers work to enhance, maintain, and create features in the Bald Eagle State Forest. There's an online database that allows easy sign up and puts those interested in contact with staff to provide direction and scope. Some of the groups that assist in the Bald Eagle are Boy Scouts of America, Girl Scouts of America, local school groups, Pennsylvania Trail Rider Association, Bald Eagle Trail Riders, Bald Eagle Mountain Bikers Association, PA Equine Council, Mid-State Trail Association, and Keystone Trail Association. This slide has the um, link or the, the page that you would find if you, you went to the uh, DCNR portal for volunteers. Uh, it's pretty user-friendly and signing up is, uh, is, is fairly simple. It's also worth mentioning um, many of the events that we hold within the, the Bald Eagle Forest District. Um, some of these are biking, 
uh, trail running um, or utilizing some of our motorized trails. Finally, public outreach. So that is one of the primary functions of my position. So this slide should go pretty smoothly for me. But um, our district is involved with and assists with the county and state Envirothon. We provide educational events to local elementary, middle, and high school students. We annually plan and participate in Walk in Penn's Woods. We have the Stony Run Demonstration Forest that has an ID, a tree ID loop and shows various forest management practices. We support Arbor Day events and promote urban tree plantings. And we also help with repairing workshops and education. Within the three counties that I cover, um, private forest stewardship is a large portion of, of what I do and, and how I try to, try to assist landowners. Um, that can go from giving some general advice to, to helping them try and find uh, a consulting forester to help them create a forest management plan. So as it says, um, I interact with those landowners and we, we try and work towards sustainable forest management. There's over 53 forest management plans within the, my three county coverage area. So at this point, I went through the presentation and, and covered quite a bit of different material. Um, but I, again, wanna thank you for the opportunity. Um, and before we go to questions, I just wanted to mention um, my email address is listed here, um, but uh, we can also send that out um, when we provide uh, any further information. So thank you. No, thank you. Um, that was a great presentation, uh, Jake. And we have some really good questions in the chat. If anyone else um, would like to add questions to the chat, I'll make sure that they are read off at this time. Um, but we'll start from the beginning and uh, we'll just work our way through. All right. Um, so the first question that we had was from uh, towards the beginning of your presentation that was asking about um, that they asked what what you mean when you say something is an anthropogenic site um, and what types of special resources are incorporated into the zoning chart? Oh, okay. I believe that's referring to a, a, a site that um, they're studying those types of features as far as anthropology. I'm not certain on that. Um, that is a slide that's developed and kind of utilized um, across the Commonwealth. But I can jot that down and, and look into that. But that's that's what my best understanding of it would be. And I think that's why it's such a limited uh, piece of that chart. All right. Um, yeah, if you can get more information for us, I can, I can share that out. Um, the next question was, um, whether you could speak to whether DCNR is seeing impact on species location and growth in the Commonwealth that might indicate changing species range in response to climate change? Yeah, that's also a very good question. Um, I would say at this point, there, at least on the state forest system itself, um, we're not seeing um, a direct impact in species composition. However, we have to look at the whole um, basically the whole dynamic of each area. Um, so there is studies going on right now within the Bureau of Forestry um, that's trying to understand species that may be more climate tolerant as things begin, uh, begin to change. Um, but as far as a, a direct sighting or, or indication, there hasn't been to this point. Uh, our next question is about oil and gas infrastructure in the state forest, and they were wondering um, how if, if there was any fracking in the in your state forest district. Sure, um, I actually refer to our state forest management plan today uh, that pertains to our district, um, and I also shared the link to that. Um, so, of all that acreage that we've talked about. Um, there, there's 
basically no um there has been no oil or gas activity at at all on this district now there are um a very small portion, I believe it was in the hundreds of acres that uh, has the potential to have those resources there. However, it's it's not gonna be utilized as that. So no, there is no oil and gas infrastructure in the Bald Eagle State Forest. All right, um, next question. Um, are there um, are there any discussions or plans in place to connect the surrounding high population areas with transportation options to lower our carbon footprint land use and uh, associated transportation pollutions with options like mass transit um, or um, especially with like special programs like the the, the bike rides and, and things along those lines. So um, basically a question of do you know if there is any um, talk about public transit to uh, d places within the forest district. Okay, that is something that I'm, I I probably don't have an answer to, um, just something that I'm not familiar with. But again, that's something I can, can look into. All right, um, let's see the next question. We've got some great questions today, folks. Keep, folks, keep them coming. Um, Let's see. On the option for volunteers to partner with the um, with the department on conservation work, are those uh, only one day programs, um, or are, is there an option for like longer uh, week long service trips? Sure. So, like some of the groups that I had mentioned that assist in volunteering, so they kind of have spe uh, specific or or perhaps goal oriented projects. So. No, it's not limited to one day. Now, that's that's usually up to the volunteer themselves. Um, if they want to get signed up, work with the district, um, and simply want to clear a trail um, that they they utilize or would like to see other folks utilize, and it takes them a day or two, that would be great. Um, but other projects could be um, building or or maintenance of a of a bridge across a hiking trail or a multi use trail. Um, so just starting the process and getting involved kind of uh, then broadens your opportunities. Um, and, and there's definitely no limitation to the amount of volunteerism that uh, the Bald Eagle would accept. Uh, we have two more questions in the chat at this time. Um, the next question was asking whether or not wild and natural areas are completely natural or if you do uh, any sort of spraying or um, like pesticide management that would would happen in those areas. Sure, that's a, that's again a very good question. Um, and I referred to some documentation today and I actually um, that's a link that uh, that will be passed along as well. but uh, they they are merely left to be, self-sustaining areas. So so no manipulation is done in those areas. Uh, while um, things like a spongy mouth defoliation would have an impact impact on it, that is part of that natural cycle. So um, that's kind of how that is viewed. Uh, next question. Um, in the past, the CCC program did so much if a program like the CCC were to be developed again, how do you see Bald Eagle State Forest benefiting from such a program? Yeah, that's another great question and uh, something that uh, for future talks I could I could uh, try and involve. So actually right now we're working with what's called the Pennsylvania Outdoor Corps. Um, so this is a new program. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the inception date, but uh, basically there is... Uh, high school level um, students um, up to adult programs. And uh, we were able to utilize them this year um, to help with our Stony Run demonstration forest. Um, sometimes we have them doing trail work, um, working at our, our picnic areas. Um, and we, we see them as a valuable asset to be able to get um, a large amount of work done uh, in a short amount of time. So um, feel free to look that up. It's the Pennsylvania Outdoor Corps. Um, and like I said, I'm not sure when it started, but 
um, we have been utilizing them in district. All right, our last question uh, that we have in the chat right now is uh, whether or not there are any plans to replace signage at Vistas. And they wanted to know if private memorial plaques were permitted at Vistas. Sure, I can't speak to the exact timing of when Vista signage will be replaced. So usually um, our district works um, with our sign shop that's at the um, Penn Nursery. Um, we'll try and develop um, signs that need replaced or de are de declining. And um, typically, you know, um, we'll get allotted so many a year and work on that. Um, no private memorials or, or things like that are, are permitted on state forest. Um, that would be a question um, that could be asked to our, our district forester, though, um, if, if there was a circumstance where someone wanted to uh, look into that. But typically, that's not permitted. All right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, answering all of the questions. Um, if folks think of other questions after this presentation is done today, um, Jake shared his contact information in the presentation. I will share it out again when I share out a copy of the recording. Um, you could ask either myself or Jake or um, reach out to the, the district um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. For the questions that uh, we weren't able to answer today, um, Jake will do his best to, to get those responses and we can send those, imp that, those answers out as well. Um, and look for an email from me probably about Monday or Tuesday with a copy of the recording. And I have some good resources that I can share in relation to the, the State Forest District as well. Um, thank you all so much for uh, attending today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you.